Hi, uh, today I'm gonna present what uh, six months at uh, the Liver Institute and at Leo's team uh, looked like for me. Um, okay. I'm gonna start with a little background. Uh, I studied uh, genomic sciences in Mexico from uh, 18 to 2022. Uh, no, 20, yeah, 2022, yeah. And um, and my fourth year, I went to uh, the New York Genome Center to work with uh, Tulila Palainen. And this was a great year, but with all, you know, the fast live, uh, fast move in New York City plus uh, the pandemic, I decided I needed to take a little break. Um, but, well, the plan was to uh, start my work from summer of 2022 and ended in uh, summer of 2023. And this will give me time to uh, apply for uh, PhDs and everything, but uh, that didn't work. I, yeah, I was bored like in December of 2022. So um, I started thinking like, the things I wanted to learn, the things I thought I wanted to, um, you know, be better at before going to a PhD. And since I want to stay like in the dry lab uh, side of science, um, I feel like even though I had some background, I wanted to learn more stuff. And I, I remember like I knew Leo and uh, Leo is, um, I met him at a course that he gives in Mexico. Uh, so I sent him like a little Slack message, like I want to work with you <laughs> and it worked. So in February of 2023, I joined, um, Leo's team at uh, the Liver Institute. Um, during this time, I've worked with uh, two projects. The first one uh, was uh, the lateral septum project. The name of the, uh, yeah, the official name of the paper and everything is uh, uh, this one. And in this project, I had the opportunity to work with Lionel, which is a, a PhD student. Uh, with Stephanie C. Page and Carrie uh, Martinovich, and of course with Leo. Um, I think I work in this project from February to, I would say May, uh, the end of May. And then I started working with, uh, in the Havanola project. Uh, this is like the name we have right now, but I know it's gonna be, uh, maybe it's gonna be changed. And in this project, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Bukola, Luis, Ege, Kristen, and Leo again. Um, so I'm gonna uh, describe a little bit what, of what I did in these projects. I'm not gonna go deep into like uh, methods and maybe not even to the biology uh, side of, of the project, but yeah, I'm gonna give a little background. So. For the lateral septum project, um, in previous works uh, from Carrie's team, uh, they identified that the TRKV, TRKV, um, okay, the TRKV uh, path, if it was a knockdown, it affected the social novelty of uh, mice. And this is, uh, an experimental design that uh, they developed to show uh, the effects of this knockdown. And it, mm, okay, so first they have like a mouse and then they pull, they put a new mouse and in like a different chamber and mouse, mice my, that are not uh, knocked down um usually show like a um 
spend the same time, sorry, spend more time with uh, a novelty mag a mouse than the ones that are uh, knocked down. In, because the ones that are knocked down uh, spend the same time with a familiar or a novel mouse. So this reflects that when mice have a knockdown on that particular path, um, the social novelty, novelty is affected. And for that project, I well, we had a uh, bulk RNA seq data uh, from the knockdown and control mice, and also a single nucleus RNA seq. And in this project, uh, the first thing I did was to um, a gene set enrichment analysis with um, the genes, the yeah, the cluster genes that were markers for these multiple cell types, and um, the differential expressions from the bulk RNA seq data. Uh, once having these, um, we looked. Well, Lionel and I looked into this particular. A group of genes that were enriched, uh, that were um, marker genes, um, and were enriched in the negative uh, differential expressions. And these are, well, we looked, this was like a really slow process, but we look into the uh, functions of, of these genes and decided. Yeah, something like a, a level from them. And we had genes related to plasticity, neurodevelopment, and also uh, functions in the lateral septum. So this uh, figure in particular shows those genes and the expression in the multiple uh, broad um, cell types. And uh, After that, I also made a differential expression analysis. Um, this was halfway done, so I mostly uh, work with plotting the data and making it more, uh, yeah, like user friendly for for the paper and everything. Um, but as the same as in this picture, we highlight those genes. Uh, that we identified from the gene set enrichment analysis. And of course, from the differential expression analysis, I also made a, a gene ontology enrichment analysis. Um, it's, I don't know, it's kind of sad that Lionel is not here because he will explain this so much better. Uh, but in the negative, um, in the negative, uh, well, yeah, the under expressions, we had um, genes related to, um, no, sorry, in the positive, we had genes related to um, the immune system, and that was kind of expected, uh, given the uh, nature of the experiment, the knockdown. But um, in the down-related, we had uh, genes that were related uh, to functions, that we expected given the function of, of uh, the lateral septum, um, which it has, yeah, has been um, not correlated, but uh, yeah, it has functions uh, related to psychiatric disorders, um, like bipolar disorders, or maybe it's schizophrenia and also Alzheimer. Uh, so, the sets we, yeah, the terms that were enriched um, also like were in concordance of what we expected. And from the, yeah, from this project, uh, the take home message from Dipper is that um, the findings actually implicate that uh, these. Um, Pathway is a, a critical regulator, uh, regulator of gene networks associated with psychiatric disorders um, like schizophrenia, Alzheimer, and other neurodegenerative, neurodegenerative diseases. And 
for me, my learnings, I learned how to do uh, gene set enrichment analysis. I also learned how to uh, use complex heat map. And one thing I, uh, yeah, one of the things that Leo asked me uh, when I was, when he kind of interviewed me for, for working with him, uh, it was GitHub. And I haven't, well, at that moment, I didn't really uh, use GitHub that much. Um, so it was, I, I had to learn fast. <laughs> uh, but now I, yeah, I kind of see the hype about it. Um, and then for the Habenola project, um, I'm gonna, okay. Uh, for this project, I feel like I don't have like a really good biology background, but the Habenola is this little thing here and it's surrounded by the thalamus and its functions are related to reward and it has um, functions also associated to psychiatric disorders like depression and schizophrenia. But given that is this little thing and it's like super deep into the brain, we don't have a lot of information about it. And yeah, there's a lot we don't know. So I know that in this particular project, that's, uh, that's one of the uh, goals to have like a um, map for 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 uh, the marker genes for the habenula, and in the part I work I'm working in is uh, uh, with bull carinacic data uh, from sixty nine donors control and with schizophrenia, and. Um, Right now, my focus is totally in the differential expression analysis. And I feel like this is the first time I really uh, get into like all the previous work that differential expression analysis requires, uh, because I've been exploring uh, all of our variables in this project. Uh, we have SNP PCs, uh, QSBAs, uh, the total percent of uh, thalamus and habenula we have in the samples because as I mentioned uh, the habenula is this little point uh, so in our samples we have certain percent of habenula but we also have thalamus and microglia I think uh, I'm not sure but yeah we have other tissues and we want to control for that in in the differential expression analysis and we of course have other uh, QC metrics. And in this plot, I'm showing uh, the PCs uh, for, for the load counts and its relationship with all the metrics we have. And this one is a plot that it's part of the variance partition analysis. It's, it's not the main uh, plot for, for the variance partition but it shows uh, the percent of the variance that is explained by all these variables. And yeah, I this is the first time I do this kind of stuff and it's been a learning process because um, I don't know, I, I feel like I've done a lot of differential expression analysis before, but I'm worried <laughs> now I know that maybe I, I could have done it in such a better way, uh, but yeah. And these are super preliminary results, uh, but at the moment we are working, well, we're working with this model, but I decided to also make this one, um, which includes all of the QC metrics that I showed and, um, yeah, we have signal, so that's that's great. And yeah, in, in this one, I decided to delete the SNP PCs because uh, as you can see here, they do not explain a lot of variance. And when you're doing like a differential expression analysis, you don't want to have a lot of variables. Um, so yeah, I made this one too, but 
actually we haven't even discussed uh, these results in in our project meeting. Um, but yeah, it looks promising. And the take home uh, from the project, we don't know. As I said, uh, it's in it's not in early stages, but the paper it's not quite there yet. And my learnings, I like I said, I learned to do various partition, uh, the differential expression analysis, like good in yeah how it's supposed to be. Um, I kept learning uh, from GitHub in this project. Um, it was something that didn't happen in the, in the lateral septum, uh, but in this project, uh, Bukola uh, had to, um, I think her time in, in the lab ended. So we have to make like all the arrangements for me to have all the information that Bukola had and to be able to continue with the project. So those were two intense weeks. Uh, yeah, where where I have to learn everything about the project, and GitHub was really useful for this. Uh, and related to this, I learned uh, even more the value of file organization. Um, now, uh, moving on to other things I did during this time at uh, at Lyft, uh, I had the opportunity to participate in. Uh, courses and meetings. Uh, I, well, Leo um, thought uh, a module at uh, the statistical analysis of genome scale data course at Cold Spring Harbor. And uh, Diana and I were uh, his TAs. And it was, I don't know, at the beginning, I think we were both really nervous about it. I was, I was, because as you can see, these are like at least uh, uh, in their second year of PhD. Uh, so I don't know, <laughs> I was nervous about it. Um, but I had the opportunity to, to teach and to prepare the data and it actually went great. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I, I, I didn't enjoy like, going in front and yeah, saying things, but then uh, asking people if they needed help and maybe help them with um, problems they had or things they were stuck at that I really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, it was a really cool experience. Neither Diana and I are in this, in this picture, but these are all the other uh, students. Um, and uh, I am also going to participate in uh, the VIA C2023 meeting. Uh, I'm going to present three talks. Now I'm kind of regretting that, but it's OK, too late. Uh, I'm going to give uh, a, well, um, Nick, Diana, and I are going to give uh, a workshop about speakeasy and with the data from one of um, Diana's projects, which is the, which is, uh, the smoking mouse. I'm also going to present uh, the work, uh, yeah, the, the research I did uh, with Dooley Lapalainen in my last uh, undergrad year. And also, we're going to, Diane and I are going to present a um, talk about uh, the limitations that um, people from Latin America have um, related to the accessibility. Uh, of the meetings and just knowledge uh, of via conductor. Uh, we don't have a title yet. That's not good, a good sign, but we'll have it soon. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I I learned a lot. Uh, I have learned a lot in this um, past uh, six months. Uh, GitHub again, as you can see. You can clearly see when I started to work with Leo. <laughs> uh, and I also, um, I mentioned uh, to Leo this in, during the Cold Spring Harbor uh, course, but um, I think the, um, the file organization we have uh, at the lab, it's really useful. And I'm honestly gonna uh, 
keep using it. Um, also, I, as I mentioned, I had the opportunity to, to teach. Uh, so preparing the material and also preparing myself to teach was a really good, good experience that I learned a lot from. And yeah, also um, having the opportunity to work with the lab in general on um, going to Baltimore to, to meet you, it was great. And yeah, I think I probably have more things to say, but that's what it comes to my mind right now. Um, and yeah, and I must say that in these past six months, I think it's the first time that I really feel comfortable with uh, the work I'm doing. And, and that's because I have had really good guidance in the process. Um, and also I feel like I know how to do stuff now. And yeah. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs>